Iroh was a fan favorite in the last Airbender series. He is a very interesting and inspiring story spread across multiple mediums past just the original series. In this video, I'm going to break his character down and take a look at his story as I explain the entire life of Iroh. Iroh was the firstborn son to Azulon and Isla. He was born into the royal family of the Fire Nation, and his father, Azulon, was the current Fire Lord. Iroh grew up knowing that he was the crown prince of the Fire Nation and destined to become the next Fire Lord following his father. He later got a younger brother named Ozai, who he was not very close to. Iroh was a prodigy firebender, and he unearthed new abilities such as being able to breathe fire out of his mouth, something that he would later become known for. He was also able to make up his own technique to redirect lightning through his body when struck by it. Iroh was deeply spiritual, and one day, he visited the Sun Warriors where he stood before two dragons named Ran and Shaw, who were the original firebenders. Iroh convinced them that he was worthy, and they revealed to him the true secrets of firebending without using hatred and aggression, as most other firebenders did. Iroh had a connection with dragons, and he lied to the world, claiming that he had fought and killed the last surviving dragon. He did this in order to preserve what was left of the species, and to ensure that Ran and Shaw remained undisturbed. Because of this claim, along with his ability to breathe fire, he was dubbed the Dragon of the West. Iroh eventually had a son that he would name Lu Ten, and the two were very close. Iroh made his son a priority, and he loved his son more than anything in the world. During the 100 year war, Iroh became a renowned Fire Nation general. While he was a general, he tried to fulfill a lifelong dream of his, which was to capture the Earth Kingdom capital of Ba Sing Se, something that had never been breached before. The city was surrounded by giant walls, and Iroh was able to breach the outer one. He besieged the city for 600 days. While he was there, he wrote a letter to Ursa, his sister-in-law, and sent gifts to his niece and nephew. He sent Zuko a knife that became very important to him, and he gave Azula a doll, which she burned right when she got it. Before he could breach the inner wall, his son, Lu Ten, was killed on the front lines. In his grief, Iroh lost most of his fighting spirit and abandoned the siege. This loss was seen as a terrible dishonor and failure for Iroh, the royal family, and the entire Fire Nation capital. Iroh received even more pain when his father died in his sleep just days later. His younger brother Ozai told him that their father's dying wish was that he became Fire Lord instead of Iroh. Iroh didn't try to fight this, and he allowed his brother to take the throne. He had lost his desire for power after the death of Lu Ten. He retired as a general simply because it was too painful to think of fighting, the thing that had killed his son. Even so, Iroh was still well respected in the Fire Nation and well liked by the soldiers because of his personality. Iroh decided not to return to the Fire Nation right away and instead traveled throughout the world. On his journey, he became a member of the White Lotus, a secret society that transcend the boundaries of the Four Nations, and later on, he would become a Grand Lotus. While traveling, he had a spiritual adventure, and it was rumored that he went to the spirit world looking for Lu Ten. Unfortunately, he was never able to find him. These experiences had a profound impact on Iroh's life. They made him view the world differently. In the past, he had focused on his work in the military, preparing to become the Fire Lord. But after his son's death, he realized that these weren't the most important aspects of life. This led him to retire and live the rest of his life as a peaceful man, rather than a violent man who led armies to war. He began to put others first and would go out of his way to help those in need, or even just those that needed their spirit lifted. One thing he did to help grieve the death of his son was developing a passion for tea, something that became a huge part of his life. Another thing that helped him was becoming close with his nephew Zuko. Both helped the other, Zuko taking the place of a son for Iroh, and Zuko viewing Iroh as a father figure that actually treated him well. Iroh didn't like the way his brother treated Zuko, and took Zuko under his wing, especially after his mother had vanished when Ozai took the throne. One day, Iroh allowed Zuko to observe a meeting of Fire Lord Ozai's war council, but made Zuko promise that he wouldn't speak. When Zuko disobeyed and spoke out of term, his father got angry and told him that he had to be taught a lesson. Iroh was present when Ozai punished Zuko by burning his face to reveal a scar that he would have for the rest of his life. Ozai then banished Zuko and told him that he couldn't come back until he captured the Avatar. Iroh accompanied Zuko on this impossible mission, not wanting him to be alone. They spent years searching at the Western Air Temple, the sea, and all over the map. 
During this time, Iroh trained Zuko in firebending, and he became very good. Iroh tried to teach his nephew not to use anger and aggression, but rather to be at peace, something that he had learned from the original firebenders. During a fight between Zuko and Admiral Zhao, Zuko used the training Iroh gave him to win the fight. When Zhao tried to hit Zuko with a cheap shot, Iroh jumped in and saved his nephew, and told Zhao that he was disgraceful. Avatar Aang eventually returned after a hundred years, and Zuko and Iroh started to pursue him. They captured him, or got close to capturing him, many times, but every time, they let him slip through their fingers. One day, Iroh was captured by earthbenders that recognized him as the general that led the siege of Ba Sing Se. While he was captured, he was so connected with the spirit world that he was able to see Fang, Avatar Roku's dragon. He eventually escaped with the help of Zuko after smartly leaving a sandal behind for Zuko to track. Iroh and Zuko put into motion a plan to fool General Zhao after he tried to kill Zuko, and Iroh took on Zhao's offer to become his assistant general as they took over the Northern Water Tribe. On the way there, Zhao took a shot at Iroh saying that this siege would be nothing like his legendary failure in Ba Sing Se. When Zhao killed the moon spirit, Iroh became angry and went after him, but Zhao, who was terrified of Iroh's power, got away before Iroh could get to him. Zuko captured Avatar Aang, but almost died from the cold during the siege. Luckily, Aang and his friends saved him, something that Iroh was very grateful for. Shortly after that, Iroh and Zuko were branded as traitors of the Fire Nation. After narrowly escaping Azula, Iroh's niece, and Zuko's sister, they had to go into hiding. They each cut their top knots off, symbolizing their new lives. Iroh was able to adjust to a life of simplicity, humility, and poverty, but Zuko was not. This led to Zuko leaving behind his uncle and the two separating. Iroh kept an eye on his nephew, however, and jumped in a battle to ensure his safety. Iroh's niece shot him with blue lightning, and Zuko mended him back to full health. After failing to teach Zuko how to shoot lightning, due to him being blocked by his emotional turmoil, he instead taught him the technique that he had created to redirect lightning when struck by it. Iroh and Zuko eventually moved to Ba Sing Se, where Iroh got the opportunity to open his own tea shop. One day, Iroh followed Zuko under Lake Laogai, where Iroh snapped on Zuko. He told him that he did not think things through, and said that this was exactly what happened when he captured the Avatar in the cold. He had him, but had nowhere to go. He told him that he would have frozen to death if they hadn't saved him. When Zuko told him that he knew his destiny, Iroh asked him if it was his own destiny, or a destiny that someone else was trying to force on him. He begged his nephew to look inward, and begin asking himself the big question. Who was he, and what did he want? Iroh helped Zuko through his transformation of becoming good, in which he was sick in bed. Later on, both he and Zuko were almost captured again by Azula, but Iroh got them out of it by using his signature fire-breathing technique to escape. However, Zuko refused to go and was captured. Iroh became very disappointed in Zuko when he chose to side with Azula over him. Zuko was welcomed back to the Fire Nation, but Iroh was locked up for many months. Zuko visited him, but Iroh ignored him. This made Zuko angry and he stormed out, and as he did, Iroh began to cry, sad that his nephew had lost his way. Iroh finally talked to Zuko, telling him that he was the great-grandson of the Avatar before Aang, Avatar Roku, on his mother's side. Iroh knew that the eclipse was coming soon, meaning that both he and the guards would lose their firebending for a certain amount of time. He prepared for this by training when the guards weren't looking. By the time the eclipse came, he was in amazingly good shape. Right before he was about to break out, he told one of the guards named Ming, who was always nice to him, to go home. Iroh broke out, and one of the guards said that he had never seen anything like it. He said he was like a one-man army. Iroh went to Ba Sing Se to gather up the White Lotus Order. He planned on leading the order to take back Ba Sing Se that his niece had overthrown. When Zuko apologized to Iroh, Iroh cut him off mid-sentence and hugged his nephew tightly. When Zuko asked him how he could forgive him so easily, Iroh replied saying that he was never angry with him. He was just sad because he was afraid that Zuko had lost his way. He told his nephew that he was proud of him for finding his way back by himself. While going over the battle plans, Iroh said that he couldn't fight Ozai in place of the Avatar because he didn't know if he could win. He was also afraid that history would just look upon it as more senseless violence, a brother killing a brother for power. Zuko later asked Iroh if he could take his place and become the new Fire Lord, but Iroh told him that that was his destiny, not his. When Sozin's Comet came, it gave Firebenders the most power possible, and Iroh went back to the place of his greatest failure, Ba Sing Se. Only this time, he was fighting the Fire Nation rather than being a part of it. He successfully recaptured it in the name of the Earth Kingdom. After the battle was won, 
Iroh reopened his tea shop in Ba Sing Se, called Jasmine Dragon. Around one year later, Zuko was in great turmoil and talked to a picture of Iroh, not wanting to disturb his peaceful life. He felt that this was the best way to repay his former mentor, uncle, and friend after all he had done for him. Eventually, however, Aang brought Zuko to Ba Sing Se after he had passed out. Zuko once again went through a transformation back to being good and slept for four days. Iroh, this time with the help of Aang, once again helped him through this process. Zuko later asked Iroh for a favor to become Instrum Fire Lord while he and Azula went looking for their mother. His first act was to announce National Tea Appreciation Day. When Iroh was reunited with Zuko's mother, he apologized for all the pain that his family had caused her. She hugged him and forgave him, saying that his presence in the family always gave her hope. When Ursa's other daughter, Kiyi, was kidnapped, Iroh comforted her and let her confide in him. Ursa then asked Iroh how he got over the loss of his son, Lu Ten. Iroh told her that he wasn't over it and that he never would be. He told her that as parents, you want nothing more than to keep your children safe. But unfortunately, the world is a very unsafe place. He told her that no matter how hard you try, you can't keep your children completely safe. He said that this is why parents have to teach both themselves and their kids to see fear with unclouded eyes. Iroh helped Ursa even more by taking her to visit his brother Ozai in prison. Before she went in, he reminded her to have unclouded eyes. Iroh watched Zuko, Aang, Katara, and the rest of the gang grow up and eventually have kids of their own. He became a great uncle to Izumi, Zuko's daughter. Izumi eventually had a son that she named after Iroh, and he would become the youngest general in United Forces history. Iroh also got to know Katara and Aang's children, Tenzin, Bumi, and Kaya. Eventually, Iroh died of old age. He felt that he had done all he could do in the material world, but because of his knowledge and connection with the spirit world, he was able to continue his life in the spirit world, leaving behind his body and letting his soul transcend into the non-material world. He made many new spirit friends, and many years later, even came across the avatar after Aang, Avatar Korra. He helped her find her way to peace and happiness so that she could find her friend and find her way back to the material world. He would also be reunited with Aang's kid, in the spirit world, who he had not seen for almost 40 years. His spirit fox let him know that they were lost, and he offered them help to find their way back. But they declined, saying that they wanted to find Tenzin's daughter. Iroh came across Korra again while looking for a teapot, and he told her that while in the spirit world, you always seem to find something that you weren't looking for. This became even more true when Iroh told Korra about Zuko and Aang's friendship, and helped Korra get the idea to find Zuko for help, as she was unable to reach Aang. Iroh was a man that had great pain in his past, but he used that pain to better himself and help people in any way that he could. He was a humble, wise, and gracious man that helped so many people through turmoil. Iroh left behind a legacy of kindness, patience, and wisdom to all those that were lucky enough to be touched by his presence. Thank you so much for watching guys. You can follow me on social media. Links for that will be down below. If you liked this video, make sure you press that subscribe button to help grow the channel. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, check out my Patreon. Again, thank you so much for watching and look out for more great videos on the way.